Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how there is a huge disconnect between consumers, the government, and automakers. I'll explain everything in today's video. Before we get into this though, as always, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. About five months ago, I posted a survey on my main channel where I review cars asking people what powertrain they are most interested in with their next vehicle purchase. Now, before I go over the numbers, I wanna talk about why I think these numbers are statistically accurate and important. So my main channel is dedicated to reviewing cars and not just any specific type of car. I review literally everything. And because I review everything, my audience is not based in one location or another. My audience is all across the US and it's pretty accurate based on population. Like there's more people that live in New York, so I have more viewers from New York. And you know, there's more people that live in California. That's another example where I have a lot of viewers there, but population's higher. Whereas I live here in Utah, I don't have as many viewers here in Utah, but the population is a lot smaller compared to those two other states that I just mentioned. And so again, it's it's as evenly distributed as you could get. Again, when I whenever I run the percentages on how many viewers I have in a state versus that state's basically weighted population compared to the US population, it's usually pretty accurate within a percent or so. So what that means is that this survey, again, it's anonymous, is going to be pretty accurate to what people actually want to buy with their next car purchase. Now, 11,000 people voted five months ago and 17% of them said they were interested in a diesel powertrain. 53% said gas, 17% said hybrid, and, oh, sorry, with the hybrid, it's uh, 17 plus seven because plug-in hybrid, so 24% said hybrid, and then fully electric is 7%. Now, most surveys, you have to remember, only survey about you know a couple hundred people, maybe a thousand people max, 11,000 people, this is probably gonna be within a half a percent, maybe a percent max in terms of its deviation from what reality actually is. And again, if you look at the numbers in terms of how much cars are selling in each category, those numbers are pretty dang accurate. Well, I decided to redo the survey just a couple days ago to see if anything's changed in the market because the market has changed a lot, right? Since, you know, five months ago, we've seen car prices continue to come down in terms of the discounts with brand new cars. We've seen a lot happen within the used car market. Prices have also come down there. So I figured I'd see if there is, you know, a change in what people are looking for. And yes, there is. So gas cars are now 61%. There are more people interested in just a traditional gas car now compared to five months ago. Diesel is down to 13%. That's 4% decline. Hybrids are down to 20% from 24%, and then electric is down to 6%. So that had the smallest percent decrease, but again, electric cars are the smallest you know, market share currently. There's more diesels, hybrids, and gas cars in the market than there are electric cars. And so I wanna quickly talk about why these categories changed the way that they did, or at least why I think they have. And then I'll talk about how there's a big disconnect between automakers, the government, and consumers. So with gas cars increasing in terms of interest, I think this actually comes down to a couple things. So first off, gas prices are not super affordable, but they're also not insanely expensive. Most places, we'll see, outside of California and Hawaii, pretty much, we'll see gas prices around that $3 per gallon range, which again, is not dirt cheap by any means, but it's affordable enough that people are not really gonna be diving into thinking about getting an EV or a hybrid because it, you know, they, they can afford to fill up their car at the pump. So that's the first part of it. The other part of it is I've noticed this trend away from complexity. Modern cars have become so complex that there's a lot of people that are not wanting that, right? And if you look at hybrids, if you look at diesels, and if you look at electric cars here in the US market, they are more complex than the just regular gas cars with what they have going on. I know some people argue that the electric cars are the least complex because there's not as many moving parts, but mechanical stuff, even though there might be more moving parts, mechanical stuff is always more simplistic in terms of how it works compared to something that is electric that needs a lot more computers to keep things working as they should. And so I think we're moving away from complexity with what people want. And I think that's why there's this shift back towards gas cars, because you can still find a lot of gas cars that don't have 
insanely huge screens that don't have a ton of crazy stuff happening with the powertrain. Like you can get naturally aspirated engines with just regular torque converter automatic transmissions, not crazy screens all over the place, and something that just feels like it's gonna last more than a couple of years, right? It's not, there are still regular gas cars that aren't iPhone cars, basically. Now, diesel declining, I think this just comes down to the fact that most diesels that are purchased in the US market are gonna be diesel trucks, and diesel trucks are insanely expensive right now. I mean, just look at Ford Super Duty prices, right? Over $100,000 for a fully loaded truck nowadays. So I think that's why people are not as interested in diesels. And again, with the US market, the US makes it really hard to sell smaller diesels. And so I think that's another reason why there's just not as much interest and why the interest is declining is the diesels that we do have are insanely expensive and the US government does not let us have other diesels that would do amazingly well in the US market, but they just say, oh, emissions are too much. Now, hybrids declining, this one completely confused me because hybrids seem to be really hot right now. Whenever I talk to people, they say that they want a hybrid, but I did a little bit more digging and what I'm finding is that although a lot of people want hybrids, they want hybrids and vehicles that don't currently offer hybrids, so they get pushed back into the gas court category. There's a lot of people that would buy hybrids in pickup trucks, for example, or in just SUVs or cars, just a lot of different vehicles. It's just not currently offered. So I think if there were more offerings, then there would be that more there would be more demand. I think it just comes down to that with hybrids. And then with electric cars, again, this is that continued realization, market realization that electric cars are not in fact the future, right? I know some people are still going to push that they are the future, but with charging infrastructure, charging times, batteries, you know, in terms of the reliability and just the sourcing of materials, like it's just a complete dumpster fire. And the com like I said, the complexity, you look at all these electric cars and it's like, okay, the, the powertrain is technically more simple, but then there's all these computers and all this crazy stuff that if one thing decides to glitch out, the car doesn't work. It's just a lot. And so there's just a very niche buyer base for that. And I think that's going to continue. I mean, this survey shows that is going to continue to the future because there's now even less demand for electric cars than there was just five months ago. So let's quickly dive into that disconnect between the feds and consumers slash automakers, because that's where I would actually draw the line. Automakers at the end of the day, just wanna sell cars and they just want to make money, but they have to do so within the strict rules and regulations that the government sets. And the government has absolutely lost their mind. They are completely out of touch with reality, right? I, I think the federal government should do surveys like this, right? Instead of trying to force certain things down people's throats, they should see what people are actually looking for in cars. And I think that they would probably pull back on some of this legislation that they are trying to push so hard down consumers' throats and so hard down the automakers' throats. Because this survey shows that 6% of the population, again, a percent less than five months ago, is interested in a fully electric car. This whole full electrification thing by 2035, there is no way it is going to happen. Like I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put my foot down right now. Again, we're we're a little bit over 10 years from then. I just don't see how in 10 years there's going to be enough innovation and change in public perspective on electric cars to have some sort of full adoption by that time. I, I think we're a long ways off from that. And again, infrastructure, right? That's another big thing. And so that's the big disconnect, right? Is the government still thinks that all electric is the future and this is not what consumers want. I think the government should probably stop meddling so much in the car world and let the market figure itself out because if they let the market just naturally do what it's going to do, what I see actually happening is a slow transition away from just regular gas cars to traditional hybrids, some more plug-in hybrids, some more EVs, and I think that trend will continue as time goes on, as the technology improves on all of those different powertrain options, right, as they make all of those more efficient, more reliable, they can get, you know, the resources to build those battery packs that are not so um, horrible. We'll just put it at that. And so I think that's the thing to do. I think the government needs to just completely pull back, get rid of these stupid EV incentives. And if you want to incentivize, just incentivize higher economy, right? Have an incentive for EVs, but also split it up with, there is some for plug-in hybrids technically, but also I would, I would put it in hybrids as well and let the market transition in a more natural way rather than trying to just force it from A to Z right away, right? You've got to go through all the other letters of the alphabet first. 
So that's the big disconnect. Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation, but I think this is going to cause a lot of financial troubles for automakers moving forward because they're being pushed, they're being forced to build cars that people are just not going to buy. I mean, we've already seen it, right? We've already seen the dealership lots full of these electric cars, full of these plug-in hybrids, and there's just not the demand to buy them, right? They just have to keep discounting them and discounting them. And you just can't do that as a business, right? You can't build product just to sell it for less than what it costs you to build. It just doesn't make any sort of financial sense. And so either automakers are going to have to bite the bullet and get, you know, pay a lot of money for these carbon credits so they can sell cars that people want to buy or basically build cars that people don't want to buy. And I don't know. It's a mess if you ask me. I'll see you.